right, so <clears throat> this has been a journey for me because I first coded my uh, first HTML tag a year ago after I got off work from working in the oil field. I was like, this is the worst. I need to search for some career changes. And I came across, I think it was Code Academy, and I was like coding up some HTML. I was like, man, this is like magic, and this is great. And so I didn't really instantly fall in love with it, but it was something that I, I like occupied my mind because my wife says it drives her crazy that like at all parts of the day I'm like, oh, this is a cool business idea. Oh, this would be, oh, this could make me millions. And then it's just like my mind is constantly moving all the time. And so coding is like the perfect thing for me because I don't know if like 40 years from now that I'm gonna be confident that I know everything in coding. <laughs> It's, just, it's always something that I'm going to be learning. And so in that, it makes me happy because it, it keeps me uh, curious about what's, what's new, what's, uh, what's going on here. You know, ES6 and JavaScript, okay, there's some new syntax here. And so anyways, so what does is, what is avoiding complacency look like? And I'll show you what, like some basic structure that I finally have come up with because as a self-taught developer, it's really dangerous about how much time you spend in, in different places. Because you can really waste a lot of time, like I've, I've done, and what was so frustrating for me about a month ago, I, I realized that I, I wasted about five months of my time learning things that really were not relevant. And I was like really broad, like I knew all these basic coding concepts, but didn't really, know how to put things together. And then I was just like, I've got to create a, like a, a great structure for myself. I got to create a university with structure and so that I can have realistic goals instead of just aimlessly learning different things. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And sorry about my PowerPoint. My wife kind of judged me on it because it's very bland. It's black and white, literally. So. Anyways, so my structure. So these are the points that I came up with, and I really do follow these very hardcore. I like, I'm, I'm like really hyper-focused when it comes to cer certain projects. And coding is one of my projects that I just like will spend hours on, and then like my dog will come in, and be like, hey, what's up? You've been in here for like eight hours, I need to go outside. So I'm like, okay, all right, I need to be done. So first one, we're gonna look at what, what sacrifices you can make to, free up some time in your day. Mine is like I had to give up a lot of stuff. <laughs> and then like discipline, what kind of projects you're looking at, realistic goals, what does that, what does that look like? Stop copy and pasting, that's not a good thing. And then it's weird that you found instead of development, exercise. That's kind of a strange thing, but we're gonna talk about it. All right, so sacrifice. For me, I have this app on my phone that shows how much time that I spend each week on certain things, and I got my first notification. It said four hours and 30 minutes per day on my phone, and it kind of woke me up, and I was like, okay, all right. So I deleted Snapchat, I deleted my Twitter account, I deleted my Facebook account, and all I have is Instagram and LinkedIn, and my, time went down 90% the next week. So that freed up a, a ton of time for me to learn stuff, like a ton of time. And I actually finished, started finishing projects because what was happening is like when I was in the middle of a hard project and I'd come across a really difficult problem and I have no idea what was going on, I would just jump to my phone and start scrolling because it's just like a, kind of like a gateway, you know? Because I felt uncomfortable and so I just went to look at social media, video games. I really love video games. I was actually really addicted to Fortnite, oddly and embarrassingly, but I actually deleted the game, so I don't play it anymore. Watching TV, I actually limit myself on that. I like to watch New Girl, and I can binge it all the time, but uh, I kinda have to limit myself. And then social gatherings. This is the hard part, because I like to hang out with my friends. I have really great supporting friends, and I finally told them, I was like, hey, I can't, I can't hang out certain days because I take development seriously to the fact that like, I feel like I'm putting myself through school again.
because I really want to be in a developed position and I really want to be, you know, a great proficient developer in JavaScript. And so that takes a little bit of sacrifices. And I only devote all these things Saturday and Sunday. So simple as that. Monday through Friday, it's hitting the ground running. Doesn't matter if I work a 12 hour week or a 12 hour day, I go home and I code for like a couple hours. I try and push my get or my, my code to GitHub to try to get that green square in like a, a valid um, commit. So, and then we'll go to our next point <clears throat> is discipline. And, and I watched videos that people say that you really need to code daily. And I really didn't take that seriously until about two months ago. And how much I've learned and how I've gotten so much better since then by coding daily has been just night and day compared to what was before. And so, I mean, I started learning about APIs. I started learning about different loops. There's more than just three that I thought there were, like the do, while, and then we have the for loop. There's like a ton of other loops that you can use. And so it's just like, this is amazing. This is great. Okay. And then, so this, the second point is push to GitHub daily. I cannot stress that enough. Also, I know that some of you would want to uh, use your VS Code extension to where you don't have to use Git. You can just, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but if you are, it's where you don't have to use any git commands, it does it all for you. I decided to not use them, even though I know how to use them, just so for some odd reason that I have to actually go into the terminal and use git, I wanna know how to do it. And so I just, from now on, I just started using the terminal. It's kinda weird, but you know, something I decided to do. So weekly projects. I know you wanna code daily, but you gotta have kind of a direction to move towards. So every week I try and get a project done. And if that project, if I don't get it done, then I devote the next week to it. And then after that until I absolutely get it done. Because if you continue projects and don't get them done, I don't feel like you're really learning. You're just kind of staying complacent. So, and then Last one on this one is stop spending so much time in tutorial purgatory. So that's kind of, you probably have heard that several times, but it's so true. Because I, I meet with a very experienced developer weekly, and we go and grab coffee, and I told him, I said, man, there's this great React course coming out, and I'm really excited. He goes, why are you taking a React course? I was like, because like, I feel like I'm gonna learn a lot more and stuff, and he goes, I've seen your projects, you know React, like you know how it operates, it's not that like large of a deal, I mean you can expand on it, but like you don't need to spend 90 bucks to buy this course and to learn, because you already know what's going on. I just feel like you're just stuck in this tutorial mode. And so I was like, okay, all right. And so, <laughs> and so I stopped, I didn't even buy the course, and sure enough, you know, I, I kept diving in React and I didn't need that course. And so, stop spending so much time in uh, tutorials and start building stuff, because it's more rewarding then, because you're actually building stuff that's coming from your own thought process and your own logic, and you're actually seeing like the fruits of your labor, pretty much. So, there we go. We're going on to the next one, which is hard projects. <clears throat> and that can vary, like uh, for Alex, for instance, and me, my hard project is probably gonna be his easy project, and his hard project is gonna be out of reach for me. And that's okay, because I'm still learning, he's obviously still learning, we're just in two different levels. And the thing is, how to choose those projects can be kind of tricky, because if you choose something that you think that, okay, this, this is gonna be difficult, and you get into it, and now you're on like day 60 and you're still not finished with it, that's probably a little out of your reach, and you probably should have just brought it back a little bit. And so it's kind of kind of up to you on how you choose your projects. And so <clears throat> another thing is hard projects. I uh, actually, I didn't break my keyboard, but I did ruin it. So now I just take my frustration by pacing around the room and then like having a notepad in my hand and like I'll start writing things down and like that comes to mind. 
And I also like t taking a break from your projects is a good thing, even though that you feel like you're just right there because there's been so many times where I'll get up and like, and this has happened to me a couple times. I don't know if this happened to you guys, but I've solved the problem in my sleep because at night I was so stressed out about it. I was like dreaming about it and like what I was dreaming about, I woke up at like three o'clock in the morning and I was like, oh my God, that's okay. And so I like get up and I go to my computer and straight up in like 30 minutes, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. I couldn't believe I did not see this. It's like my brain is just constantly going, even when I'm trying to sleep, it's really annoying. But anyways, so just try and be aware about the project that you pick because it's really important for what you're working on. And another thing is, is once you get through like the basics, so say like the HTML and CSS portion, and like maybe the, the JavaScript portion, even though the JavaScript portion in FreeCodeCamp is pretty tough, especially when you're getting into it, it was really tough for me. I actually had to veer off and then come back to it, especially with the intermediate algorithms. Um, but start asking like people around you to build stuff for them. And they might think it's a little strange, but it's like, hey, can I build you a website? And they'd be like, sure. And so <laughs> you start building the websites and it's actually it looks really good on like your resume if you actually build really solid projects. And so be, be aware of the type of projects that you choose because it's really important. <clears throat> Realistic goals. This is a problem for me because I'm really ambitious and I really like to set outrageous goals that are not reachable that I don't realize they're not reachable until like a few days in and I wasted like hours of my life. So the only goals that I really set for myself are daily goals, which is the only goal every day is the code, and weekly goals. And with that, it has helped me immensely with structure and it's rewarding because it's like, I finished this goal today of code today and I finished my project this week. Like, that's all it really needs to be. I feel like I do have like long term, like I really wanna have this certification, but like in, in the long run, you start to like hurry and when you're reaching that, trying to reach that deadline and you start to, to, to skip over things that you really need to learn. So I feel like in my personal opinion, you really need to have only daily and weekly goals because it keeps you on track. <clears throat> and for me, Another thing is, is I only spend Saturday and Sundays just branding myself. I think that's really important too, is I, I work on LinkedIn posts. Um, I try and say like, say relevant things and that are helpful not only for me, but for all like other developers that are upcoming. Because I also follow other upcoming developers that share stuff that's actually helpful for me to read. So work on that stuff, work on your resume, work on your portfolio site. I finally finished my portfolio site and Kimberly gave me some great feedback on it. Some other people great, gave me some great feedback on it. And so as you know, work on, on the weekends, I free up my time by just diving into whatever the heck I want to instead of feeling like I need to keep hammering this one spot. That's Monday through Friday for me. So it's good to have a good uh, structure, especially if you're a self-taught developer. <clears throat> Stop copy and pasting. So. I do copy and paste, but it's for like CSS stuff because I hate CSS, but I like, I copy and paste the things that I already know how to do. So I'll give you an example. If I'm trying to create like a really good shadow around a box, I really don't want to have to like dabble and mess with the numbers to make them. So I just like Google modern shadows for divs, CSS, <laughs> and it brings up some code pen and then I'll like look at some examples and I'll copy and paste it. But when it comes to like something that I don't know how to do and I find the answer, I have a, like a notepad, a notepad next to me and I start writing things down because say, well, why did this person do this? And then I also take it a next uh, step further and say, how can I write this better? And maybe to fit my project more efficiently than maybe this person was trying to fit their project. Because it could be a little different. So on the copy and pasting, you can actually learn a lot if you just slow down and feel like you're not in such a hurry and actually understand the code that you're trying to, to pull into your project. 
And then last one right here. I know it's kind of something that we don't like doing. I don't really like doing. But it like I tore my Achilles last year. And I didn't work out for like nine months afterwards because it was just like, it was one of the most painful experiences in my life. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I didn't work out for a long time. And my wife's like, you were walking around fine. Why aren't you working out? And I was like, because there's something back then I really like doing. I was like, oh, I don't know. I just tore my Achilles. So I just don't want to do that anymore. So, <laughs> but uh, I started working out about three months ago. And um, it, it produces like more productivity for me. It really does. And it's something that we awfully do not want to do, but it's like our bodies are made to move. And it like helps you think clear. It helps me have a better routine. It's just once you get over that hump, it's really helpful for you and everything. So my last quote here actually is, I got it from Jensen Crawford on LinkedIn. He said, a graduate from a 90-day engineering boot camp isn't qualified to design a highway bridge. Why would anyone think that a 12-week boot camp qualifies a graduate to be a software engineer? And I think that's so true because we put this timeline, we read these articles of someone getting a job within like three months or four months, uh, but we don't really know what their level is at. They don't know the prior knowledge when they, before they started. So that was a problem for me because I started comparing myself to other developers who were getting jobs and I wasn't. And I also started to find other people who were struggling just as hard as I was, which was encouraging because like, I'm not the only one. So to take from this, development is, it's, it's hard and it takes time. It's not something that you go through and you fly through the free code camp challenges. Nothing drives me more crazy is when someone's like, I just, you know, I don't know if I really like free code camp because like I went through the HTML and CSS and it was easy for me. And I was like, I was like, well, I mean, did you try out the projects? And you're like, oh no, I didn't really do the projects. And I'm like, well, I mean, if you try the projects, you'll understand that you'll probably forget a lot of the stuff that you just learned. <laughs> so <laughs> and other people were like, well, I read this book on JavaScript, you know, I feel like I really understand it. And, and my other question is like, well, I mean, have you built some projects from that? And they're like, no, not really. I feel like I understand it pretty well. And it's like, well, you probably should build some projects because you'll quickly understand that you probably don't remember a lot of the stuff that you just read or understand how it works. So anyways, and so not just to talk to you and give you a speech of what's going on, I would like to give you some real examples of what I've coded. And they're not impressive, but for me, they're like it was a step up. So I'll go through the first algorithm, the intermediate algorithm, that gave me a lot of trouble a long time ago. And then like I came back, um, I came back and I solved it in like five seconds. And it was really frustrating because it's just like, you, once you come back to that certain stuff, you understand <clears throat> like what's going on a lot better. You like, you can read it like you're reading English in a way. And so the first one right here, is, well, how many of you guys understand, or have you guys know a little bit about JavaScript? No, if not, that is totally fine, that is totally okay, because I was in the same boat as you. So I'll try to explain this as, to the best of my ability. So right now, we've got to, right here, put in the values that are different, that's like the difference. So like right here, we got one, two, three, five, one, two, three, four, five. So we got to put four into here. And then also, if these were like words, we got to compare them and change or push the word that's a symmetrical difference into here. So a long time ago, <clears throat> I say like a long time ago, it was like three months ago, I was trying to do it with the, like a for loop, saying like, like I, equals zero, and then I, and I was like all over the place. And now my solution here is not probably the best solution, maybe not the fastest solution, but it works. And that's okay, and that's something to be proud of. So there's called a for of loop, which iterates over arrays. And a for in loop iterates over objects. So I wanna iterate over these arrays right here, right? So. I want to grab every item with this first array right here. 
which is this one right here. If you're not familiar with JavaScript, this is an argument being passed in to this right here. So I want to go for let item of array one. Let me explain this right here. So item is grabbing each of these items right here. I like calling them items because it makes sense to me. You can call it numbers if you want to, or num, whatever you want to do. I like item. So now we want to see if it's included in any of these right here. So we're going to create a conditional. We'll go if array two, which we're grabbing this right here, dot includes item, which is comparing array one items to array two. And if it equals false, we want to new array and then push that value into here. Now, if I do that, I'm pretty sure it's not going to pass. Yeah, so it's not going to pass because we got to compare the other array. So we got to flip it. So we go for of, so we go let item of grab the other array. And then we just basically switch it around. I swear if this doesn't work, I'm going to lose my mind. Okay, so we compare both arrays. So now if I set this to true, it wouldn't push anything because it would just say, it would just grab all these arrays that are not the difference. But if it's false, so if it doesn't include it, then it grabs that one item. And we go here. There we go. And so the reason why I show you that is that I went from, let me show you, taking hours to figure this out, which is, you know, whatever level you're at, there's always rewards, and I was happy about this. <laughs> and barely, this is the JavaScript I wrote right here. And I, because of the structure that I implemented and because of the disciplines I implemented, I was able to come back and solve this because you start to, when you code daily, you actually start picking up things because you actually repeat a lot of things but in different ways. And so you actually have like this memory bank of, oh, I mean, I remember how to do this. Maybe I can apply it this way. And so there you go. And there's another project that I worked on grabbing a RESTful API and which grabs all the countries um, in the world with this API and you can implement different regions and stuff like that. And I'll show you where I get these projects from and it's really helpful. So we can change the region. Here we go, it changes here. Now if we wanna learn more about the country, we can click on them and it slides over, different information like that. Now I built this in React and this was a project that I was really intimidated by because I'd never dealt with an API before. And actually my wife pointed out because I was running a continuous loop on accident and my computer was like acting like it was taken off. <laughs> and my wife was watching TV and I was like running, she goes, is your, is your computer taking off right now? And I like didn't even notice and it was like getting really hot. And I was like, what in the world? And so I went into the render area, if you're familiar with React, and I put like console hello, and it was just like it just constantly. And React has some some funny quirks about how they render things, and so I was like using the wrong like life life cycle method, and so that took me a while to figure it out. And so 
building projects you're not really comfortable with, you run into things like this. You, it's good to fail and because you learn from it. And because of these projects, I was actually able to land an internship that I start next week. And because I was able to like hold a conversation with one of the developers who I'm known for a little bit. He goes, hey, I, you know, I understand that you're just studying development. You know, tell me a little bit like where you're learning. And so I started talking about these projects. And it was easy talking to him because I knew him. And he goes, what do you think about coming on and you know, helping us out a little bit? You'll be developing in Vue, which I've never developed in. But he said the, the learning curve is really not that bad. And also I'll be working with Rails, which I've never also developed in. But the thing is, is like, I'm extremely excited because I get to continue learning new things. And that's what development is all about. It's not really the, to stay complacent. It's like finding that one project that just takes it a little bit further. And it's a little bit further again. And the thing is, is like when people say that HTML or CSS is easy, I think it's kind of bull crap because there's always something more to learn about it. Especially CSS. CSS is very frustrating to me even to this day. Like it's just when I do like responsive and I can still, like there's a scroll bar. I'm like, what container is causing it to do this? And I'm like going through it, I'm like, like deleting certain st stuff and it's still happening and then it's like really frustrating. But it's like CSS, CS, CSS is still really hard. And so don't take it for granted and don't just buzz through things. Learn it and be proficient at it. And also one last thing, pick one thing and be really good at it. For me, I, wanted, I started learning Elixir. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous because that's such a huge learning curve and I didn't even master JavaScript. I don't think I'll ever master JavaScript, but I hope that I've become a very proficient developer in it. And so to keep you from trying to waste so much time learning so many different things, it's like someone said, it's like, you don't wanna be a wide lake that's only two feet deep. <clears throat> I'd rather be like a small pond that's like 50 feet deep. It's kind of a weird analogy, but it's just, I can't stress enough that if you want to learn front-end development and or especially front-end development, JavaScript is something that you should study until like you're just really good at it. Instead of trying to learn a little bit of that and then learning a little bit of Ruby and then learning a little bit of Python and whatever you want to go to. but. I, I should just strongly suggest that you really become proficient at certain things that are complementing each other and then move on to the next thing. So that's what I got for you. Thank you.